is an extreme pleasure for me to be up here right now sharing my thoughts on the cross, on what communion, the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ means to me. Uh, my name is Alicia Blaine. Uh, many of you know me as Lish, only because that's easier to say for most people. Um, but uh, I am the leader of the team ministry here at Cornerstone. Um, <laughs> And although I've been uh, blessed to, to take the role as leader, I learned so much from our students here uh, over the past three years uh, in December. Uh, this is my third time doing this, um, and it never gets easier. Senior Sunday is emotional. I was walking in today like, okay, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna keep the tears in today because Byron cried enough for all of us for the rest of the year last <laughs> If you weren't here last Sunday, we had several baptisms, and one of our, our, our amazing worship leaders cried like a baby, rightfully so. It was an amazing thing. But uh, it made me think about the decision that I made almost 22 years ago to get in the waters of baptism and how I looked up at my mom, not unlike Byron, crying her eyes out at her baby getting ready to make the decision. The scripture that changed my life and helped me make that decision is this one. When they hurled the insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. That's 1 Peter 2, 23-25. You know, when I read that scripture as a young person, it really hit me, not necessarily for the reasons you might think, you know, later on in my life, I would come to appreciate, you know, him not retaliating when threats were made or, or, you know, I would come to appreciate the fact that he bore his, our sin in his body on the cross. But the part that hit me when I was a young person studying the scripture was the part that says, so that. The Bible says he bore, he himself bore our sin in his body on the cross so that. And you know, when I was growing up, like many of you, instructions in my home were not like an option. It wasn't a suggestion, right? <laughs> um, if my mom sent me to the store so that I could get bread, I don't care what else I got, I better come back with what? Bread. Absolutely, right? <laughs> and so when I read that scripture as a young person, I said, wait, he did all this so that I could die to sin, and live for righteousness. I didn't even know what that all meant. I just know he didn't do it so that I could feel bad or so that I could come to church or even so that I could just get baptized. He did it so that I could die to sin and then live for righteousness. This framed my entire discipleship and still does to this day. I often ask myself when I'm tempted to live for sin and not let righteousness live in my life, when I'm tempted to do what I want to do, right, the opposite of the scripture, I ask myself, do you still believe that Jesus died on the cross? The answer is yes. So then I tell myself, well, then you got <laughs> to live for righteousness and die to sin. If you still believe this, you still have to have the proper response. And the truth is, if you've heard me talk about my story at all, you already know this, but my response to the cross started way before me. My mom became a Christian when I was three years old, and her response to the cross is what led to me, 11 years later at 14, being able to have the proper response to the cross because of what I had witnessed in her life. You know, children see everything. I saw my mom a lot 
before she was a Christian, even though I was a young person, I was a, a child. And I saw her in her early days of discipleship. And then over time, I started to see her change. I saw her become more patient, more loving. I saw her get advice. I saw her bring people into our home when things were not great. And I saw her not keeping secrets, but being vulnerable about the things that were going on. I saw her apologize to us, which in a black household was foreign. What do you mean apologizing to your kids? <laughs> my friends' parents, my cousins, my aunts were not apologizing to their kids. And I saw my mom be different. So when I gained an understanding of the word of God and that Jesus died on the cross so that I could live the way that I saw my mom and so many other people living, the way that I saw Jesus live and the disciples live in the Bible, I was sure that I could do it too. But the beautiful thing about my mom changing and then my older sister who became a Christian before me and then me becoming a Christian later on is that I got to learn that the promise is generational. And that's what I want to impress upon you all today. One of my favorite scriptures says, Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. Then it goes on to say, When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Here's the really good part. The promise is for you and your children and all who are far off, for all who the Lord our God will call. When we look at that so that, and we have the proper response to the cross, it not only changes our lives, but it changes the lives of everyone coming behind us. It allows this promise to be true. My response to the cross at 14 years old, almost 22 years ago on October 27th, allows me to do what I do in the lives of these children. The responses that many of them have had and by faith will have to the cross will allow them to be standing somewhere, whether it's on a stage or not in 22 years, having a, an eternal effect on the spiritual lives of the younger people around them. And I got news for you. The responses that you have had to the cross allow you to be the family that these children grew up in, were loved in, were uh, nestled in, were trained in, and know God because of. I want you to really understand that when we respond to that, so that part of that scripture, it has eternal effects on not just us, but our children, our grandchildren, our family members, their friends, and everyone that we come into contact with. The cross is generational. It's not just for you, and it's not just for me. Our response to it will allow the promise that Peter talked about in Acts 2 to be true for all that we encounter. You know, today as we celebrate our seniors, as they graduate, as they move on, I've said to them in private, I said it in the card and I'll say it forever, Cornerstone is their home. No matter where you go in life, this is your spiritual home and you can always come back. I don't care what you do, where you go, how bad you mess up, come back home because we, with our response to the cross, will be here to keep that generational promise alive for you and even your kids and their kids. I am encouraged that we belong to a church that takes this time of communion uh, seriously that takes the idea of the cross of Christ uh, as our cornerstone to what we do. That is not just a performance or, you know, something that we do every now and then, but we really believe that the cross is the reason why we're able to serve God. And my prayer is that every day we're able to keep that heart, that cornerstone uh, in place so that we never give up on this generational promise. I'm going to say a prayer and we'll be able to take communion. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for Jesus and his sacrifice. And God, as a father, we thank you that you selflessly sent your son down to die for our sins. God, we thank you that he did this not just so that we could feel bad or make some changes or be church members or get baptized, but he did it so that we could die to sin and then live for righteousness. 
What a gracious God who doesn't want us to just die, but wants us to live, Father. You want us to have an abundant life, Father, because we are able to live for righteousness. God, as we take uh, the cup that represents your blood and the bread that represents your body, help us to be sobered, but help us to also rejoice because we get to live a life that shows you how grateful we are for your sacrifice. Be with us each and every day as we walk this life out for your glory. In the name of Jesus, I pray these things. Amen.